I'm John Chase, scientist, rapper, and maybe one day space traveler. I'm going to be answering some big questions about space and the universe by exploring the science we see all around us, right here on Earth. If you want to get your head around space, here are some of the questions you need to ask. Have you ever stopped to think about where everything around us came from? It's a question as big as the universe itself. In order to make sense of where it came from, we need to understand the sheer scale of the universe. And I think I've got a wicked way to put that into perspective. I've come to Edinburgh armed with toilet roll and peppercorns to show you what I mean. Do you not know how big the solar system is? Yeah. Big. Like, how, it's big, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> Basically, if I took that as the sun, Earth would be about 100 times smaller. So we're going to use these to represent different planets. I'm going to show you lot how far Neptune is. That's the sun. I'm going to use a special measuring device, bog roll. It's the most scientific I got it from NASA. Nah, <laughs> blatantly not. But yeah, this is the distance from the sun to Mercury, yeah? Closest planet to the sun. There's Mercury, that little bad boy there. Does anyone know the order of the planets? Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Saturn. <laughs> yes. Jupiter. 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 Right. I'll give Sun. you a maid that you'll never Jupiter. forget from now on. My very easy method just speeds up naming planets. If you can remember that, my starts with an M, so it's Mercury. Very starts with a V, so it's Venus. Easy starts with an E, so it's Earth. You get my drift. My very easy method. Although Pluto's now been reclassified as a dwarf planet. There's Venus. Earth is at two and a half. Mars is at four. So Venus is actually closer to the Earth than Mars is. I thought Mars was closer. No, yeah, Mars is a bit further. See, it's surprised, isn't it? We could go to Venus, but the thing about Venus, it's a rubbish planet to go to, smells of farts. I'm not joking, it smells of rotten eggs, it's 400 degrees and it rains acid. Venus is rubbish, that's why we go to Mars. The next planet, Jupiter, is at 13. Let's go to Saturn. And remember, this is all if the sun was this big. Uranus, as you can see, it's twice as far as far as Saturn. This is how far Neptune is. Right. So as you can see, at this scale, space gets really big. If you wanted on this scale to see the nearest star, you'd have to have it in Glasgow. And in this model, the distance from our peppercorn sun in Edinburgh to the furthest point in our galaxy would mean rolling out toilet paper to the moon and back. It's hard to imagine. But our solar system is just a tiny part of our universe that evolved over billions of years. To find out where the universe came from, it helps to know a bit about where it's going. You can get an idea about the movements of the universe by visiting a racetrack like this. When the car comes closer, the pitch of the engine appears to get higher. As the car travels away from me, the pitch appears to be lower. You can hear the same thing when an ambulance drives past with its siren on. And this is called the Doppler effect. Sound travels in waves. When the car is coming towards me, the waves appear to be closer together. As they travel away from me, there are fewer waves arriving to me each second, so the pitch appears to drop. Light also travels in waves. When a light source moves away from an object at high speed, the light looks redder. Waves from a receding star have further to travel to reach the object, so appear to have a longer wavelength or are redshifted. Because you only see redshift in objects traveling away from you, when scientists observed distant galaxies and found that they were also redshifted, it proved that the space between everything in the universe was expanding. If you imagine that this balloon is the actual fabric of space, and each one of these dots is a different galaxy, as it expands, the dots get further apart. If they're getting further apart over time, it must mean that at some time in history, all of these dots were closer together. And at this point, when it was all really close together, is what we see as the beginning of our universe. Most scientists believe that the whole universe began in an explosion about 14 billion years ago. This is known as the Big Bang Theory and states that originally 
all the matter in the universe was concentrated in a single point. So we can see the effects of the Big Bang, but we can also hear them. Scientists have discovered microwaves and radio waves coming from every direction in space. This is called Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation, or CMBR. CMBR comes from light created at the beginning of the universe, which, as the universe has expanded, has been stretched into microwaves and radio waves. 1% of the static I'm picking up is radio waves, which are part of the CMBR. So even though it's the part of the radio that you never want to listen to, the part that you're least interested in, it's still really amazing to think that, actually, that's the sound of the beginning of the universe almost 14 billion years ago. It's impossible to deny the huge impact of redshift on our understanding of where everything in the universe came from. So if we know that galaxies are moving away from each other, maybe the next big question is, where are we all headed?